Okay, it being 7.31, uh, I'm going to open the meeting and I will state for the record that this meeting is being recorded. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, but Warren, I don't think we have a quorum yet. Oh, Jeremiah is on his way in. Oh. Yeah, we have to have a quorum before we can do that. And now we do. Uh, there he is. <laughs> okay, because you didn't hear it, Jeremiah. This meeting is being recorded. I assume you know that or knew that already. Um, okay, so um, what I would like to do is, since we got, I'd, I'd like to take care of Mr. Caruso right off, if we could. Thank you. That really, uh, uh, it's going to be relatively simple and straightforward. Um, as there, I'm sure everybody's read their uh, their dissertation on that. Peter, did you have anything to add to it? Uh, no, and I thank you for entertaining it the second time because that was here last uh, last month. Just to mm -hmm. eliminate that line for that little uh, piece of uh, 2,438 square feet, if we could eliminate that and remove that, that would be great. Yep. Okay, well, um, since that's relatively simple, this is just an update, a uh, revision of the plan that we already looked at once before. Uh, oh, right. Uh, pardon? I said Ryan's here, so he yes. can read them. Motions. Yes, Ryan, do you have the motions uh, in front of you? Ryan, you're muted. I do. Let me just get back. Okay. To of first of all, first of all, um, um, does anybody else have any questions about what went on here with Winter Street? Are you guys all set? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. All right. Then I will entertain a motion from uh, Mr. Carroll. Mr. Chairman, I move the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse. Approval not required. The plan entitled Plan of Plan 66 Winter Street, North Reading, Mass. Dated September 29th, 2021. Revised December 14th, 2021. Drawn by Andover Consultants Incorporated. Second. Uh, seconded by Mr. Hayden. Okay, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Jeremiah? Aye. Okay, uh, Mr. Hayden? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Redloff is here. Aye. And I am, self, I, I am an aye also, so that gives us uh, five in favor, no opposed. And uh, you are all set, sir. Thank you very much. Have, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very um, much. I didn't see any sense in dragging this out since we already went through this once. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just one question. Uh, yes, the, sir. the board has to sign this uh, mylar. Yes, we do. Uh, do you know when that, I can pick it up at the town hall, one of you. Well, I'm sure Debbie will have it available uh, tomorrow, and as soon as anyone can get by to sign, I'll get down I'm there. Sure that's all we need. Yeah, I can get by after uh, one o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I could. Pro I'm probably can get by tomorrow myself. I might be earlier than that, but yeah. I'll okay. Get by. Well, there's at least three, so you, you got a good shot at getting in a day or two. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Again, okay. I have a have a good holiday, everyone. Okay. You too. Thank you you too. too. I, sh I should mention the town hall is closed at noon on Thursday. <laughs> but it's Wednesday tomorrow, right? Yes, but for oh, Thursday. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're moving it up. Before, again. before one o'clock on Thursday. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Before noon on Thursday. Yeah. Well, no. start to... <laughs> Thursday morning. You know, just in case somebody bleeds out a little early, they take off. You know, you never know. I'll Thank call you want to. I'll call you when it's all signed. Oh, that's there very kind. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, okay, thanks. good. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Good okay. Night. Um, so, um, let's let's talk about the uh, accessory dwelling unit bylaw for because we've got a little bit of time before that, and I and I think we can get through that. Um, sure. <laughs> Did everybody read the uh, proposed draft? Sure. Yep. Yeah. What do yep. you What do you think? What are your comments on it? Well, uh, you, if you don't If you don't mind me please. kicking this off, especially because I imagine I'm going to be the dissenting opinion in all this. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, I I find it both unnecessarily restrictive and. I don't think that it advances the goals that we state in the introduction. So to me, it's a little out of alignment in that kind of way. Um, what's the, uh, Jeremiah, what's the major thing that you would change in it? Um, 
Well, the two issues for me are primarily the, you know, the prohibition on the detached um, element, which yeah. to me, requiring a special permit kind of resolves, you know, it, it gives us that opportunity to kind of make sure everything fits and is appropriate. Um, we've already got all the other kind of restrictive elements, especially when it comes around septic and things like that, mm -hmm. to kind of make sure that the other issues that we're worried about are already kind of being addressed. Um, I don't think an exception for, you know, historic carriage houses is enough because it, you know, we have a lot of new developments in town that simply don't have those kind of features, you know, so it's basically an effective prohibition on those kind of property owners. And then we will look at like restricting the tenancy to family and caregivers it effectively defeats the purpose of ADUs as a tool in the housing crisis. And, and it goes directly against the first stated goal. So, you know, to me, this is just, I'm not suggesting we adopt like a Texas style view, Texas style view of zoning where everything goes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're God on your own property kind of thing. But I think we should be very conservative when it comes to outright prohibiting kind of things. And, prohibiting an entire wide class of tenants and styles of, of ADUs just to me seems overreaching. Okay. Um, anybody else have any comments on it? Yeah, Warren. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah, ironically, I kind of take the opposite view, uh, respectfully, Jeremiah. Um, it, to me, it seems, I, I guess I'm kind of lost with the intention here. We seem to be blending the two goals, or at least the two goals, the two issues in my mind. One was the MAPC study suggesting these were uh, a good tool to address the housing crisis. And the other is Jerry telling us that he feels like he doesn't have the teeth to make adequate enforcement to, you know, safely do these ADU. So, when I look at it, I look at it from kind of the, those two perspectives. Um, I think we're, it's, it's, it's vague in the sense that I don't see how you're enforcing how many people end up in the ADU or, you know, what they ultimately partition it with in terms of bedrooms or what, what the use is going to be in terms of a, you know, caregiver scenario or a family member scenario. Cause obviously one sale down the road, it could be a completely different thing. So in my mind, I look at it more from, you know, uh, I think like Dave has mentioned before, you know, some, some properties in town that, you know, people essentially create a multifamily property in a single family neighborhood. And I think that's detrimental to the other uh, homes in the area, even if it does in fact increase the value of that home, I think it has a negative effect on the overall character of a neighborhood and something that a lot of people value in the town. So I'm more of the mind that this needs to be as restrictive as possible to make sure that, you know, Jerry can enforce the rule, but be mindful of the fact that it is largely a single family bedroom community. And I think that, you know, I drive through neighborhoods in this town that are 70s era where people have infilled their garages over time and, and you know people are parking their cars in the in the grass because there's now five cars in the in a you know two-car driveway so I think it I think it there's a negative effect that it has on the overall character of neighborhoods and I think a lot of people would be opposed to that being you know their neighbor or happening in their neighborhood so I'm, I'm cautious about any uh any sort of language here that you know encourages or or, or does less to restrict this use okay any comments dave i mean i i guess it's important to just to go back to where you know we started because there's the jerry noel issue of helping out our building inspector um with a problem he's experiencing with um you know, for lack of a better word, abuse, and, and he's trying to plug the holes and we, he came to us looking for a solution. So there's that aspect, but then there's going even further back, you know, to the MAPC survey, which I think it, you know, 
since this is, you know, we're recording minutes here and people could be watching, you know, it's important for people to know that, you know, it, it's a, it's a survey that was done a few years back and Danielle, you can tell me the exact year, but you know, it started, it, it started with 554 respondents. And after the first question, it dropped down to 432. And when it did get to ADUs, the ADU question, and there was two of them, actually two questions, noted specific areas in town. So not even like town wide. And then the responses for favorability to ADUs was in the lowest percentage of all responses. So I pointed this out, I think on other meetings, I've had Carlos uh, not agree, but confirm exactly what my findings were in an email he sent me, I have right here, uh, dated May 18th of 2020. And so it's important for Jeremiah to understand like, what's the mandate first? We got to back up. So are you trying to just um, meet the, what are the objectives, if you will, the, the, the purpose and intent of the Massachusetts model bylaw? Like, so that's good. That's what kind of Danielle's put down there. And that is, like you're saying, are we honest to that intent? That's a good question and, and it's valid. But like, you have to also go back and say, what's, what is the, what is driving this? Is, is this what people in town want? And with, in my opinion, such a small sample and with also a sample that delivered the, the lowest fa favorability for this particular avenue that we're pursuing right now, I think it's hubris to think like, this is something we gotta do you know, that because I don't see the mandate. Um, I'm, a, I'm a data person. I don't see the data that's telling us everybody in town wants this. So I go back to where at least my intent is to help Jerry. That, that's, so that's what's motivating me. I, I'm trying to at least do that because that I do know is a problem. Jerry needs help. He's asked for it. And we're the committee, the board that needs to help him. And so I look at that. So I'm not saying that the what Danielle has in here as a starter is, is bad. It's, it's, you know, it's modeling the, the, you know, what the state model is. So it's, it's fine, but I, you know, I respectfully disagree with Jeremiah because it's like our intent was not to just jack up ADUs everywhere. It was to help out, you know, help out, help out Jerry. And, and again, I, I go back to mandate. It does matter. Like, you know, just because Reading wants this or another town, that's a little bit more, you know, has a little bit more commercial going on, you know, like base and everything like that. Uh, doesn't mean that everybody in, in North Reading wants it. You know, I, I think we do have we are responsible to the to the residents in of North Reading. Right, right. So, um, what? I, I, I there are some, you know, Jer I mean, I, I I like the thought that Jeremiah put it, but I but there are some uh, some practical issues. But before I do that, though, Christopher, what do you? Uh, I had I had one question. So this is a proposed bylaw. So does this have to go to town meeting or to yes. a town vote? It does, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? So uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah may not think that this is broad enough for for what he thinks should happen, but this is overly broad for the base in North Reading that's going to go to and vote for this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think small steps is a good thing. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I like what I see here. I don't, I don't know if we want to go too much farther. It does give us a yeah. little bit of power that, um, you know, the, the Jerry's going to get some, uh, some use out of this and be able to utilize this to, to make, ADUs more legal uh, built correctly uh, and the town's going to know about them and, and that's going to indeed uh, raise the value of the properties they're in for a tax base. Um, but if we go to the, to the big jump, uh, I don't think it's going to make it off the floor at town meeting. Yeah, so, you're, probably, you're probably right. But let me just, uh, but just to some of the points that Jeremiah got. One of the things um, about the expansive law that you're, you're thinking about, Jeremiah, is that that would be great if we were on sewer. But the actual, but, but if they take a garage and they convert it and put a one bedroom in there, um, 
they're not, it won't work in this, the septic system they got that's matched up to the house now. So that means, that means that they're gonna, but you know, here's the thing, they can't just put a one bedroom septic system in. The minimum size is three bedrooms. So there's a substantial cost associated with, with that. Whereas if, if you're converting inside a house and existing, you can give up one of the bedrooms there to the, to the ADU and, and, and basically it makes it a very practical thing. So from a practical point of view, from a mechanical point of view, um, going a little too far at this point probably isn't really gonna help too much. But the other thing is that, the, that you uh, run into, um, if you start allowing it in, 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 uh, in, uh, in other structures, um, um, you begin to run into the, uh, the situation of people just randomly doing it and not taking and not following the rules, not making sure they got a system that matches up or anything. So, uh, and that's the problem that he's running into now. So again, because we're not up, because we don't have to, because these houses are not up to the septic, that's going to be a real. That's going to slow it down a whole lot and make the putting an, ED, an EDU in a in a um, and inside a house, an existing building, much more practical and, and doable. So, and I agree with Chris that, that we're more likely, we're likely to get a beaten on town meeting floor if we go too far. Okay, and that's an element of it I certainly didn't, uh, you know, factor into it. But, you know, like the talk about the septic, just it continues to confuse me because we're talking about septic being an issue for an attached, but there's already the law that you that you've mentioned several times that would apply to a detached. So yeah. there's already a regulation in place that would prevent a detached that could not meet a high level of criteria. So right. there's already a regulation in place that prevents <coughs> the, the, the negative outcome that we're looking to prevent. Yeah. So if all we're saying is that in order to have a detached, you need a special permit that shows above and beyond that all the other concerns are taken care of, but they've been accommodated, and therefore a special permit can be issued. Why do we need to have a prohibition? That, that, that's the part that kind of confuses me because there's, there's already the preventative measures to address the things that we want to prevent. And for, as a lawyer, that's kind of my, my thinking with stuff is that if you already have a law that's designed to address an issue, then why do you need an overarching prohibition that just strips people from any say and any possibility of doing something that could comply? Right. And I'm in favor of doing something. And I'm fully in favor of giving Jerry everything he needs to address the issues he wants. So when it comes to things like the parking spaces, when it comes to the number of rooms, when it comes to the septic, when it comes to all that, I'm perfectly fine with limiting those things and giving him the teeth to go in and really enforce those kind of things. But there are two very broad prohibitions in this current draft that I think is overstepping on the rights of a property. And that is, you know, the detached element and the nature of who the tenants could be. And, you know, again, I, I respect the fact that this is just building off of the Massachusetts model kind of thing. But then let's be clear about stripping out all those introductory uh, intentions of what we're trying to achieve here, because this current draft is very contradictory. Well, um, there is a, um, hang, on, hang on a minute, Danielle, but there is, you, you uh, do realize that Needham, that the, the, the occupation thing part count comes from a bylaw from Needham that, that passed muster and passed attorney general and was done that way in, in, in that town because they knew that if they opened it up to just anybody uh, to be able to live in these ADUs that they would not have voted for it. And, and again, that you, you have to take that into account when you look at this. And, and, and Chris called it small steps. Well, you know, I might, uh, I might kind of agree with that. While I, I agree, with, <laughs> you, you have no idea how much I agree with, your, with the concept you have, Jeremiah, to provide, to really provide housing and, and some of the things that other states like California have done to provide housing, which is the goal here. But I also have to be realistic about the fact I wouldn't want to put together a pie in the sky um, application and bring it to town meeting and have them say no and walk out empty handed. So we need to consider what the mentality of the town is. And Dave's research also shows that, you know, they, they're lukewarm on it and they're lukewarm on it. So that if we give them something that's a little too big a pill to swallow, they won't. 
So I mean, there are so this everybody's got a really good points here. There's really good considerations here on everybody's part. So, so but we I think we have to, you know, maybe massage this all together and make it into uh, something that has not too much, but enough to accomplish at least the basic goals. So go ahead, Danielle. Yeah, I think you, you have to acknowledge when you do anything like this that you are making you are writing something that is potentially going to change what the town looks like. Okay. And, I mean, it's good, bad, whatever. I mean, so that to me is sobering in that to Chris's point, you need to get this through town meeting. And if you just go like, we're going hog wild here and just having ADUs everywhere. I just don't think there's no mandate in the town for this. You know, there, well, there, let me make one other quick point, And that is, that um, uh, you, uh, you probably heard that many years ago, they, they, uh, they forgot to renew that portion of the bylaw. And so for a period of time, there were uh, a bunch of uh, uh, ADUs, if you will, that, got, that came in um, and um, our in-law apartments, if you want to call them that, in-laws that got put in legally, but then as quickly as they could, the town quickly slammed that door shut. So they, so again, that's the mentality that we're dealing with. We need to be, we need to remember that because otherwise the net will be setting ourselves up for failure. So Danielle had a couple points she wanted to make. Go ahead, Danielle. Yeah, so I mean, Jeremiah is right that, that it is contradictory in that way. And I mean, thank you for pointing that out. I think um, I started with the Massachusetts, um, you know, uh, model bylaw as a base. The reason I added the language from Needham, we didn't really talk about tenancy that much, but what I heard at the, um, when I went to the development team meeting and I spoke to the department heads, um, the concern was shared that um, they didn't really feel many, not all, but some of them felt that it would not be politically, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't pass town meeting. And um, so while I kind, of, I kind of pressed them on a little bit too, because what is, um, What's difficult is they all, all of them, Jerry, you know, Chief Murphy, all acknowledge that's not enforceable. They, they can enforce it. I'm not always comfortable. I'm actually, I'm never comfortable <laughs> recommending we put something in a bylaw that I know we can't enforce because then people will turn around and say, oh, I see the town is not following this part of the bylaw. Like, why aren't you enforcing it? And they, um, you know, they can, they will be critical and rightfully so. So I have mixed feelings about it. I think in general, it's it's the right thing to not restrict the tenancy in that way. Um, but it, this is an important issue that I think um, could be, you know, a, a deal breaker on the whole thing. Um, and I don't know if we really know um, yet how people will respond. Um, I don't know. I don't know quite how to address that issue other than maybe we have a couple of public meetings about it. We try to maybe advertise it very widely and we encourage people to specifically give us comment on, you know, this, this, this issue. I know that there was a survey included as part of the master plan. It, it, I don't think it, it phrased the questions in the right way. We did do a housing plan prior to that with a very clear and very good survey. And in that survey, there was quite a bit of interest, but that doesn't mean that people would be ready to vote for it at town meeting. Um, I think we have a lot of issues to hammer out, so. So um, Danielle, I just have a question too on just on, on your memo too, where on number two, where you say uh, family or caregivers, and to maybe Jeremiah's point, like I don't see in the bylaw where maybe I missed it, where it seems like it's all family members. So how, if a caregiver can a caregiver be someone that's not family member? I guess yes. you know, live in. Yes. Okay, and that's in there. Do you, can you point yes. to exactly? Yeah, where? that's supposed to be the intent of that wording in the bylaw. It's either a family member or it's a caregiver. And also, uh, I'll see. I'll, I'll recognize you in a minute, Vincenzo. Um, but I, I, that's another thing we, we've got to get it by the select board and, and, and they may be a bit more conservative than, than we are. And so there's a good possibility that, you know, so again, um, Jeremiah, we want to put something together that we think has a good chance of getting us started on the path, because right now we're nowhere. Uh, and, and by getting us started on the path, it gives Jerry something to hang his hat on. And then we can work our way forward. And if we decide in a while that, um, this, that there really is too much opposition, assuming we get the first bylaw through, through town meeting, then uh, we could add on to it in the future and, and, um, and, and be happy with uh, just you know, getting the whole thing going. So go ahead, Vincenzo. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Sorry, I missed the first few minutes. Okay. So one point I just want to make and you know, maybe piggyback on what David said, 
right now you talk to any real estate agent in the town, this is how North Reading is built. Single family home community with the possibility, with the possibility of some development for elderly housing and whatnot, which, you know, we talk a lot about. So I do think that I agree that when it gets to the select board, but forget the select board, town meeting, <laughs> everyone that has moved in the last four or five years, this is going to be something where the first thing they're going to think of in their head is, my real estate agent said, this is not the town that does this. And that's reality. And I feel like not just with this, but there is a magnitude of issues that are being discussed between select board, CPC, and other committees where people are ignoring the fact that those moving in, and I'm in the middle of that, are not going to go for a lot of these things if they're too wild. That's fact. And guess what? That's who's moving in. Like, so, so again, I, I just want to put in like, and again, I'm not CPC, but I just figured just to piggyback, I, I, I do agree that if it sounds like we're going to open the floodgates, like this is Malden, Medford, Stoneham, uh, I'm not too familiar with Melrose, this thing won't even make it to the town meeting. So I just want to be realistic, like, and I agree with you, Warren, like what you said. So that's my two cents. Again, I mean, I'm not. I'm not CPC. I'm not telling anybody what to do, but I think that the second, the second anyone sniffs that we're trying to turn this into Malden again yeah. or Rivera or Saugus. Yeah. Just, well, we, it's going to have zero chance of meeting. We can't do it because we don't have sewer. And that's, that's such a critical part of all these other towns that we're talking about is, it, is, is the fact that they don't need to go dig another big hole in their backyard to do this. And so, and, and in this town, what we're going to. So um, by limiting it the way, the way Danielle did in that, in the, in that bylaw, now we're going to tweak it, I guess. And, and we'll, we'll you know, we're going to stick a little bit of the stuff that Jeremiah wants in there. And we're going to put, try to get, a, a, we're going to be conservative enough, hopefully, as Chris mentioned, to get it so that we have a law that will, that will pass muster. So um, um, do you want to take all this information we have from tonight, Danielle, and, and then we'll relook at it again in the future? Yeah, let's do that. Um, and I think, I think you got next... what you needed tonight. <laughs> I do, but I want to make sure at the next meeting we have, I want us to talk about why we actually want to do this, because I actually think that of the five members, we might have five different reasons for wanting to do it. Yeah. So I want to make sure that we put something together Maybe. that... I, I just, I mean, to, to solve the problem of um, the building inspector not being able to enforce a violation where he has to allow two kitchens, this is not going to solve that. Um, well, here's the thing, here's the other thing, Danielle, that here's the other issue that, that I see that nobody's talked about yet, and that is that we put this all together and, um, and we get a, a bylaw that allows him to, and then somebody uh, uh, brings something before us and want to, with, 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 a re, with some reason um, you know, an infirm person in the house, they need to do it, and it's got to be over the, the detached garage, and they take it to the Board of Appeals. And now what? You see what I mean? So there are still some, there are still some things that could happen that would accomplish some of those goals, um, you know, as long as we keep it a special permit, but, but, and don't allow it by right. I, so, Jeremiah, if you understand a little, that's kind of what would happen here. So a little bit of what you want will happen, but it will happen a little differently with a real need. So, um, so anyway, so there's, we, that, everybody did really well. So a lot of good information all put together in one spot, more than I thought we would get. So we, we got to look at everything we just said tonight and, and try to put together a, a, a bylaw that works. So anybody else want to add any last minute comments? You guys are great. Go ahead, Jeremiah. All right. Uh, the only thing, maybe it's just a point of principle. And, and as the rookie to both the town and to this uh, board, you know, I, I'm humble in all of this. But to your point, Vicezzo, I'm a recent home, home buyer in this community. Yep. And we invested a lot in our house. Yep. And there are things that work and things that don't work. And as a property owner, I'd like to know that I can, you know, take advantage of my property. Right. We're creating a prohibition. We're not removing a prohibition. We're creating a prohibition. We're creating a prohibition on property owners. 
to me, that is something that if I'm, you know, somebody at town meeting and they're saying to me, hey, we're telling what you can't do with your property rather than a different approach. I, I think people might have a different of opinion. So well, how right that now, survey is, right how that the, survey the bylaw is that they can't do that. The bylaw now is they cannot, they have that prohibition already exists. Well, I thought, that, I we, thought it was the absence is that why everybody was doing it without and that we were creating the rules to stop them from it. No, because right now it's not allowed, period. So, so, um, so the idea now is to, to try and loosen that prohibition up a little. So yeah, there is, there okay. is a, 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 a couple of ways to look at it. And, uh, and, yeah. I, and I think we can get, like I said, a little bit of everybody's thing in here. And we'll see if we can't put together a bylaw that gets us on the path. Otherwise than that, you know, we'll uh, go nowhere with this. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a helpful point and I appreciate you pointing it out. Too. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, we're all set with that. Okay, Danielle, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'll put it on for maybe the second meeting in January. Yep, yeah, that'll be good. We'll give us a chance to all look it over. Maybe we'll do a rewrite, send it out, have everybody comment on it. Okay. Um, okay, so we got the uh, eight o'clock here. So we have a uh, public hearing. Um, for um, Crestview Estates, and uh, we have the uh, and we have I see Jill is here, and um, do we have an uh, engineer here as well? Yes, sir. No. Oh, I can explain. <laughs> well, I, I well, let me. I, I, is there a presentation for tonight, or or just a just a uh, extension? So, if I may. Um... Mr. Pierce, there's a small presentation because there are a couple of things we just need to um, talk about with the board to be able to round out all our comments with the peer review, review engineer. So right. I had only recently, I only got the plans after close of business yesterday and only sent them to Danielle tonight, which is why you didn't get a copy. Right. I just sent them to you. You, didn't, you wouldn't even have gotten them. You couldn't have even distributed them, Danielle. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I don't remember no, seeing them. No, that's why I say no, there's no possibility. I got them last night. I just barely got them to you. And I apologize, but that was how long it took. We did get the narrative done, but that was it. And then I do have a couple of questions relative to the narrative um, and, and a couple of the questions that was, were raised by the peer reviewer. But one right. of the things also, it, um, do you want me just to jump into it? Is that fine? Well, um, yeah, I just, uh, just uh, if everybody read that, uh, that, uh, that peer review, um, and, it, and it seemed that some of the uh, that there are some discrepancies about how uh, how this is done, um, uh, but by the same token, there's been no second answer from the peer review. In other words, the peer review was done; they responded. We have we need a, re a response back to say, yeah, well, I see why you're doing it. Yeah, that's okay. We don't have that yet. So, uh, understanding that that's the position we're in uh, right now, please go ahead. Yeah, we are definitely going to continue because that is exactly the position. But okay. we, at our hearing a while ago, we had discussed um, the fact that we were going to actually put in a bus stop. Remember, we had a conversation about, are we going to have to put in sidewalks? Yes, no. Yep. None of the streets we connect to have them. Chestnut doesn't. Flint doesn't. Do we really need yep. to? Do we have to create more impervious area? And then the board said, well, how about creating a bus stop at, le at minimum? So that's what I wanted to show you to see, look at, should I actually have to put in the um, sidewalk? And if I can screen share, I don't, because Danielle, again, didn't have the plans in time. If I can screen share, I can show you what I have. Well, I, I, I don't understand what your question is. Is so, your question whether or not we would rather have the sidewalk or the bus stop? Is that the question? Sidewalk that would allow, so we'd need a waiver, or is it fine to just have the bus stop like we had discussed at the last hearing? Okay. And if I can screen share, I can just show you where the bus stop is, and we can have a discussion yeah. about the, the propriety of putting in um, you know, sidewalks in this particular subdivision. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, you know, we, we um, um, and, and Chris will back me up on this. We look at, uh, at, a, at a situation where we could, where we, where, where they say the sidewalk goes to nowhere. And we say, well, that, that's true today, but not necessarily tomorrow. I mean, if we put some sidewalks in on Central Street, when we did some of those other, some of the other work, and then, then we wouldn't be now trying to put a whole sidewalk and we'd be looking to put connectors in. There's a yeah, you know, it, to, to existing sidewalks, but, but since we didn't start anywhere, now we have to do the whole thing. 
So, so sometimes just having a place to start helps quite a bit. And when Eisenhower states went in, they, they, that's what happened. They, they, they did sidewalks on both sides to a certain point. And then all of a sudden we connected everything together and now we got side all the way to the center of town. Right, and it's whatever the board pleases, but that was what yeah. the conversation was, is at least at minimum put a bus yeah. stop in and let's have a further discussion. I mean, yeah. clearly we can we can put a sidewalk in. Um, we would ask to only put it on one side at most. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, we can take a peek and you can see the, the bus stop is in there and you can let me know. And that was the purpose of tonight is to answer that question and then a couple of the other questions as well. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So do you want to do you want to let me share? Um, yeah, you here, if you go to, if you want to present to it, go, go ahead and screen share and we'll take a look and then, and then explain it to us. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so as you can see on this particular, um, I'm trying to get the, why can't I do this? You can see that the at the very bottom that mm -hmm. box that is in the radius. That's just where we're proposing to put the school bus stop. So we would put something in, the bus stop would be there, there'll be a sign, there'll be a place for people to stand, it'll be paved and available and people can have a safe place to go. So that was what we were going to do. If we need to put a sidewalk in, we'd obviously put it on the side where the bus stop is, which would be on the, I think that's the east facing side. Yeah. Yep. And that's really, I mean, the bus stop is very rudimentary. It's just an area for the kids to go gather, wait for the bus. If I may, okay. Mr. Pierce. Go ahead, go ahead. So I, at the first meeting, I've, I listened to all the, all the recordings. So I, I knew this was in there, um, but I didn't get a chance to speak. Sidewalks are really important. There, there was no sidewalk down, down Haverhill Street and uh, between uh, uh, Foley and North, actually, all the, I did this, yeah, there was a sidewalk partial way up to uh, to the Hood School. But once we put that sidewalk in on Haverhill Street, how many more people started walking, Warren? You live right there. Yeah, I mean, it was it it is it is all the time, all the time, all the people, time, all the time going by because now they feel safe. They're not walking in the roadway, and Chestnut Street. You know that that's in you're you're coming out to Chestnut, but that street is heavily traveled, and there's no sidewalk. And I agree with you, but at some point we're going to try to put one in there. So and having I, sidewalks everywhere else around there as much as we can, it really helps. So then, is is the board in support of doing a sidewalk only on one side? Then I don't. Um, I don't. Personally, I don't think that we need it's it's I think what it is, it's a it's a little bit of a trade off. And this is my opinion. My opinion is that that a sidewalk on one side is adequate because if you you know you create a one on, on two sides and you know and you're creating a bunch of infrastructure that 20 years down the road, you're doubling the amount of infrastructure that need would need to be repaired. And one sidewalk will do it. It's a place where people can can walk. I mean, half the time on these subdivisions, when, when people are running and walking, they're in the street anyway. But the kids get told to stay on the sidewalk. And, and so basically, you need to have one for them to stay on rather than walk around in the street. I agree. Right. So with that, Mr. Hayden, uh, Mr. Pierce, and, and uh, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Rolf, as are people in agreement, can I go and have direct the engineer to put them on one side? I know you're not voting formally, but you know. Yeah, well, I could, I would, uh, I could ask for, for, uh, uh, to, to see if everybody thinks it's a great idea, um, but much we, better we, than no. Just, I, are you all done with that? What you're going to present, or you want to talk? I'm, I'm going to keep going. So I have a couple of other things, but I figure we take one. Would you like like it all at once? Yeah, just go, uh, and we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. So then there's also one comment about providing um, traffic level of service, uh, you know, which which requires traffic counts and all of these other things. It makes absolutely no sense in this area. I mean, the level of service at this particular, at all of the intersections here are A or B. I mean, it's low level, there's no weight, there's no traffic. So it's just spending money. So we are asking in, in the engineer to say, well, we need to see the level of service. That's what's in the report. And we responded with, no matter what we do, given the number of homes, we couldn't change the level of service. And that's what we have an opinion on within our traffic report. And the level of service in these areas are at least an A or B because there's no wait time. So it's like requesting information just for the sake of creating 
for no, lack of a better term, churning money. It, it, there's no point to it. So I'm asking for that. That's in the uh, that's in the peer review letter. So we responded to it and basically said just that. But again, I didn't want to then delay another month. If this board says to me, Jill, you have to have it, then obviously I'm going to have it. But I, I just I'm going to put up I, I'm going to put up the uh, responses. That'll help be helpful, right? It's on page nine. Um, so I just thought that we would have that conversation. All right. So so. Um... In your opinion, you know, you're asking us if whether or not you, you're, a lot of times what happens is we get, uh, we get pressed about a level of service on that from the uh, neighborhoods. They all want yes. to know, they all want to, you know, so we, sometimes we, we know when we look at it, similar to what you're saying, that we're probably not going to have um, a, a huge problem with traffic in, 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 in a particular um, intersectional or location, but the people that come to the meetings in the in the neighborhoods, they don't know that, and they want somebody to give them a level of comfort. Um, and if you don't, and then something happens, they'll come back and say, you know, you didn't do a traffic study, <laughs> so you don't. Know. We, we we didn't do that type of a report because it, there's just not enough traffic generated by this property. But we did provide a full traffic study. We we included. Yeah. And it was intentional because we want to always provide that level of, of response for this board so that they can actually address about our comments, but no one has even levied that concern. And again, it just seems like, I mean, so it's information. It? Oh, oh. Um, uh, oh, provide a proposed level of service. That's what you're asking about? That's what they, that's the comment from DCI. Uh, let's uh, we'll ask him what it is he means by that because it seems to me if you already done a traffic study I don't know what he means proposed level of service. Yeah, well, we did a traffic report. Okay, well, the Chestnut only... Street. Well, first of all, the Chestnut Street Flint Street. That's kind of a little tricky intersection. Yeah. The way the way it comes up. But so, the tre uh, Chestnut. It. We're talking about our Chestnut. We're talking about our intersection with Chestnut and our intersection with Flint, not the Flint Chestnut Street intersection. Well, I think so that, I, yeah, thinking what's going to this is the Chestnut Street Flint Street intersection. Yeah, you, you're going to get you're going to get traffic being bled off of those roads onto your new road yeah. to come out. Now, in other words, it I may don't take think a, this is about your your intersection with Flint Street and your intersection with Chestnut Street. Right. I thought I you meant the current I intersection now. I thought you meant the current intersection that exists now, where Flint intersects with Chestnut Street. So we are creating our own. Yeah. E entrance off of both points. So our plans, right? Our plans. Um, here's our intersection. I mean, I can go very first. Now, I what just I want to do, Jill, what I want to do here, I think, yeah. is um, I want to go back to Dave and see what it is that he's taught. What, 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 what are they, what is he, is he talking about the, because I don't see, again, you know, if you got a road that's exiting onto a main road and it's not a four way, then those intersections are usually, especially on in this particular case, those inter intersections are relatively benign. Exactly. Um, so the, but however, the, the Chestnut and Flint intersection, with the two of those come together, that's a tricky location. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering if he meant there. I, no, he didn't. He meant actually in ours, because we don't, the, the Chestnut Flint is up the road and you can see how it's on that weird I know, curve. but it's but it's a, but it, but if you if you have driven through there a few times you realize that would be the choke point it would be exactly but, but our our subdivision because of the way it's done these people I, the likelihood of our subdivision ever going out down flint and out that way is almost never going to happen if people are exiting out flint they're going north and if they're going out to chestnut I mean, look at this. There's only 13 homes, and maybe two of them could take Flint, but everybody else is taking Chestnut out to. I apologize. Taking, um, I think we called it Coakley or McGowan. I can't remember now. We even called the road out to um, Chestnut Street, the new road, and that's why. I mean, we're we're looking at 13 homes, and, and that it, we can ask Dave specifically, and I can I can actually share I, that. I, need with to, I, think, I think I need to do that to be honest with you. Because okay. I, I, I believe that I think that he, he's uh, he might have meant that and you might have not realized that. 
Yeah, I, I have no idea why he would be doing that one. Because that is a very, again, I hate to keep saying it, but the, because that is a very difficult intersection. It is. This isn't good on, isn't, you got, you know, you got to wait there and it's a, it's an uphill around the corner, tight. And that's the, and yeah. if people start, cut, if you start getting people backed up there, you, that, that's an intersection that could use, could lower its level of service pretty quickly. I, I think with this number of homes, it still won't have an impact. But yeah, because well, let, me check, have, let, let, let us check with let them before us, we Let's give talk you about a, it with Dave. That's why I bring it up. So you right. want to have Dave specifically address what exactly is he even looking for and what is he asking? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. I, I can. I've driven that so many times. I can, I can tell you that that it's you know going and 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 I've seen that even now the traffic back up a little and people screeching trying to get out. You know. So it's not fun yeah. making that that turn to the uh, west there no and i bet it isn't it's just that our proposed intersection which is what we consider in the subdivision has no issues relative to sight line intersection stopping just none of it neither well, one I, don't believe, I believe you're correct so that's why that's what makes me question why he put that in there so let's find I, out that's a good point i and i will we will and then okay. the last the last issue was the same issue we brought up last time with the driveway dimension it's there's a driveway that's 20 feet wide. I mean, they, there's the um, comment that you need to make your driveway. Um, this was, I think, from the fire department, right, Danielle? The 20 foot wide driveway for a 50 foot long driveway. So every driveway that's 50 feet long needs to be 20 feet wide. I and we can make all that. I think the fire department wants 18 feet. They, is that, they change that? Okay. No, it's always been 18 feet. That's in the state code, actually. Yeah, but they he came back to us with twenty. That's what's in the comments from Danielle. No, well, I don't know why he would, because in the past when we've had them cut the fire department comment on it, eighteen feet for the number they gave us. Yeah, remember that Danielle from the. Uh... I do. They. Yeah, I'll try to get some clarity on that. I I yeah. think. I I know that that was something they've been asking for in our subdivisions lately. The twenty feet up to 50 feet back um, or sprinkling the houses, but I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's a recommendation or if there's something that they can require. I'm, well, I'm the concept, the concept is this, if a car gets stuck, break broken down halfway down that driveway, theoretically with a wide enough driveway, you could still get an ambulance and a fire truck around it. That's the concept. I mean, so, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you and and then it depends on how far it is to from from the hydrant to the house and and you know et cetera et cetera. I mean, so it's that's up, something it, that we've that that we've they've talked about before. I don't I I don't remember seeing them being that that uh, hard about it in the past, Danielle. You, uh, I mean, in the in the in the law, you know, maybe in the recent past, we've had a couple of yeah. requests. Recent past, it had to do with um, the 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 definition of access roads yeah, for a while right. they thought it was a requirement in the fire code it's not but i don't know what to do with the fire department saying they need to see something right that's the nfpa so, and that's specifically for access roads it is not for driveways but he was quoting it in his his statement and that's why i keep bringing it up because i don't know how to address it because they're kind of interpreting them to be access roads even though i'm not sure they're well, drive a driveway is an access to the home. Right, but it's not an access road under the FPA. That's not what it defines. Right, yeah. right. Well, I guess that's another one we're going to have to do a little research on. So I'm glad you brought all these up. Give us a chance to check out with everybody and we'll see where we're going. Yeah, no, and it'd just be helpful because before I, I mean, I finalized the plans and redistributed so that we can have a second go around with Dave, um, with DCI, yeah. but it'd be yeah. helpful if we can get answers to these, um, you know, yeah. these Obviously, I know the answer to the sidewalks. I'm putting them in on one side. But to these two issues, it'd be very helpful so that we can proceed. Well, I'm getting you a consensus from the board, but, you know, to see what they think. But and then you can work with it. So and yep. we'll see how it goes. OK. And that's that's it, Mr. Pierce. I mean, we just okay. wanted to understand on those three points. OK. All right. Uh, so uh, if you will uh, remove your screen share, please. Oh, my goodness. Yep. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's OK. I always forget that. Trust me. There you oh, that, go. that part's okay. So I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna look for a consensus from the board what they think about sidewalk on one side or two sides. Um, Jeremiah, what do you think? Um, I think that a compromise is probably what's necessary. I, I'd like to see on both sides 
because if you're on the side without a sidewalk and you've got little kids and walking dogs, you still got to cross the street. But in a subdivision like this, relatively low traffic, um, yeah, I, I, I could see one side being a fair compliment. Good, excellent. Now, Dave? Sorry, just get off mute. Yeah, I, I agree with Jeremiah. I think I think one is fine. Yep. Okay, Ryan. Uh, I, I disagree. To be honest with you, I um, I feel like that's that's the bylaw that we have. That's our subdivision laws, and the town wants to change that. We should change it, but I don't. I haven't been heard any compelling reason why we should go away from what we have in place right now. Okay. Well, we have uh, done, done it many times in the past, changed it to single to one side before because it mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. And we've taken the uh, uh, the other sidewalk and had them give us something like a bus stop or a parking area or something that we needed. So so, and that, that, that ended up being a lot more valuable to us than a sidewalk on both sides. And again, we had a town engineer for a while who was he used to hop up and down and yell at us all the time about putting sidewalks on both sides because he would say they don't walk on them, first of all. And then in 20 years, you got to replace them. You're doubling the infrastructure, doubling the cost you're handing off to the future. So that's what we used to hear all the time. So, uh, you've heard of Christopher before. I mean, Steve Casazzi used to beat us up on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but, uh, but how, so how do you think? So this, this one is kind of an interesting one because, you know, we've usually taken the single sidewalk on a dead end. Yeah. You know, in a, in a dead end road because... Minimal traffic, not yep. a problem to cross the street. This actually connects two different roads. So it's not dead end. Mm -hmm. And it connects two roads that are semi busy. But if, you know, I'll bet you the first six months this road is open, it's going to be really busy until people decide that maybe it isn't, uh, it isn't, uh, time saving to go down that way unless there's a uh, uh, accident at the corner of uh, Flint and Chestnut and they can't get out. Um, so it, it actually, it, you know, and, and that road will get real busy when that happens. Let me tell you. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I think, you know, and you know me, I like to stay with the bylaw, mm -hmm. but in this one, I think, you know, having a sidewalk on one side, as long as it's the right side, the correct side, you know, mm -hmm. where are the most houses? Is it on the east side of that road or is it on the west side of that road? You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember um, mm -hmm. where things are here. I think, I think on the, the uh, east side where the bus stop is, is probably the, the busiest side of the road. It's also where that little cul-de-sac is, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. So that can join all the traffic out to, out to Flint Street, but foot traffic out to Flint Street or, or mm -hmm. out to Chestnut Street. So I think, you know, one side would be better. Um, I would definitely not go for no sidewalks, yeah. but I could, I could see only one. And I do agree. Yeah. It's extra infrastructure that we don't need. Yeah. Yeah. I'm i uh, I'm kind of okay with one sidewalk, although I do, <coughs> we have in the past had a, a neighborhood come in before the, before just as a, and basically what you're getting here is a consensus, but we have had a neighborhood when we did King's Row, they came in, and they would not leave until we put a sidewalk on both sides. And then, you know, two years later, I'm driving down King's Road and there's 20 people walking on the street and nobody on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, uh, I know, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. So, um, so, um, so, so that, so that could be a factor before the final decision when the final vote is taken, you know, because, you know, Ryan or, 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 might, or might prevail <laughs> and get them on both sides. So, <laughs> you know, because the neighborhoods might get behind them, you know, that's how it happens. So, yeah. um, so there you go. There's a consensus and there's the best I can give you right now. No, I'm just, it's just, we have to design the storm water. That's why too, because sidewalks yeah. on both sides will alter that because it's a low impact development. Right. Because you do have some water issues on that site. Yeah. So, I think there's a lot of water issues on that so, site. So again, that's just another reason to, to, to limit the amount of, of infrastructure that, that that's needs to be replaced or redone or, or whatever. So, but um, it, it's not, a, it's not a job to design for you to save money. It's in our job to design. With best I understand. So it, I understand. It was really not an intent to save money because we understand we'd have to provide for something, some alternative. Yeah. It truly, truly was an intent to reduce impervious yeah. area. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's perfect. Okay. 
I, I will tell the engineer and we'll respond. And then with regard to the other two matters, how do we proceed, Mr. Pierce? Do we? Well, I, I think we got to talk to Dave about uh, about uh, what we're doing with that. And, I, um, and, and but I think he's also already got some responses necessary to respond to the responses he got from his, <laughs> his comments. So uh, and, and he may and he may be OK with, for example, using the boundaries of the system not of the subdivision and not necessarily using the whole the whole uh, catchment area. You know, I yep. mean, I know that's an issue that he's going to have to work on. I mean, I, I read their explanation. And to some extent, I, I agree why they uh, decided to stick stick with the boundaries of the subdivision. But we'll we'll uh, we'll see what Dave says about that. He may be okay with it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, so, all right. So you guys will just respond to Dave. I won't. Those two issues will be brought up. Yeah, we're by... gonna check with Dave. Go ahead, Danielle. You had a call, yeah. comment. I was just gonna say that um, I was going to follow up with Dave and make sure in DCI's response um, that they specifically address um, you know the issues of you know clarify a little bit more expand on what they need as far as um information on the level of surface surface level of service impact to that intersection um and also maybe i'll ask them to weigh in a little bit on the fire if they can um but i think they may be waiting to have a plan set oh but now we do have a plan set right um yeah. before they do a full response so you want I, I will send them, them. okay i'm sorry john do you want me to send them the plan set or do you want to? I sent um, it only to you tonight. If you sent it to me, then I'll forward it on to them with my questions. I can do that tomorrow morning. Thank you very yeah, much. We, yeah, since we have a few questions of our own, Jill, it would probably be best if we forward it to them with our questions. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Any questions? Okay. Let's... Uh, then we need to, uh, we want to continue this anyway, right? But we still, yes. still have some time. We, how much time do we, yeah. we still have? No, you, you need to, you should have a, a continuation motion in your motions, Warren. When do we think we would do that? Because we need, I assume the board does not want to see me again until I have responses from DCI, right? Yeah, we're going to have to get those and get them to you so you can respond to them as well, so. Right. So, can we do this? Can we continue till the second meeting in January? But yeah. can we also um, have a request to extend the deadline for final action on the subdivision until um, maybe sometime in February, maybe even March 1st? Why don't I just want to make March sure. 1st? Give us March 1st to give us a little. Yeah, I think okay. no matter what, we're going to have the same. It'll be the decision is yeah. going to be issued when it's okay. issued. But March 1st, then you and I don't have to continuously think about it. And sure. then with regard to going to the second, going to the second meeting in January, I think that's appropriate because okay. if DCI issues responses to our com comments to our responses, then we may be able to turn them again. Yeah. Okay. So um, what is yes, the second I meeting in January then? Is that the 18th? That's the yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, that's perfect. I have so many double bookings. <laughs> booking, booking. All right. <laughs> that is that's perfect. Okay, so the 18th we would continue to. Yep. Yes. Now, as far as the request to continue, I mean, we just do that verbally with the vote. As far as the request to extend, I think it would be good if we had a signed letter from you that I I'll, can then bring to the town clerk. Um, yep, now, I'll what I'm not like sure of. Because I'm not used to um, have handling this online rather than in person, I don't. Do I have to have that signed letter before the CPC can vote so that I can take both? Nope. The, C the CPC doesn't even vote for it. It's it's the right of the applicant to to request the extension. So all I do is submit to you a request for extension. I'll deliver to the town clerk and to you at the same time tomorrow, and it's done. I thought we had to also vote. You no, you just no? accept okay. it. I, I put it in okay. and you literally accept it. I mean, you can vote if you want to. Okay. Well, do we have time before the next meeting? But it was not our, our, does our, is our original time not going to run out until uh, after um, the next meeting? It's after the next meeting. I, uh, I think it's January 26th, but I should. Right, so, worst time. case, we'll just vote on January Yeah, we could do, we could vote that on the fourth. Yeah. Danielle. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. as soon as I submit the extension, so the, what the statute says is I have the right for a um, for an automatic approval if you don't do it within a certain time. But if I send you the extension, I'm saying to you, you don't have to issue the approval. So right. I'd never win in court. So even if it doesn't matter, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> I, I'm giving you the extension. Well, worse, you know, again, we have a lawsuit court either, Joe. If the, if the, you know if me. I would never do that to you. Never. 
never. Well, if, if it turns out that it looks like it's a requirement, we'll have January 4th to vote on it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, but I'll I, deliver. Okay. I may just put that on the January 4th agenda, not that we're having the sure. hearing, but just the request to extend the time. Right. I, I may just sure. put that on. That's fine. Yeah, fine. Thank you. That makes sense. Abundance of caution. Okay. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. And you'll see it from me tomorrow, Danielle, because I'll file it with you and the town clerk. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. We still okay. have that motion for the for the next meeting. You want to do that, Warren? Uh, just got to change the date. Sure. Ryan's there somewhere, I think. Yep. Yep. Do you see that motion, Ryan? Yeah. So the new date is the eighteenth. Eighteenth. Yes. The eighteenth. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pierce, I move the appeal to the Planning Commission vote to grant the requested continuance of the public hearing for 39 Chestnut and 9 Flint Street until Tuesday, January 18th, 2022 at 8 p.m. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, then I will take a roll call vote. Jeremiah? Aye. And Christopher? Aye. David? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And my eye also, so that's five in favor, no opposed. You're all set, Jill. Perfect. Thank you very much. Everybody have a wonderful holiday and I will see you after. Yep. Okay. Great. You too. Thank you. you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay, so um, we have uh, you know, Warren, I know that we voted on these things before because we're always searching for that Friday date after our meeting. Yeah, that's yeah. We yeah we usually the deadline is always a Friday, not a not a Tuesday, because right. they have to file with the clerk's office. Right, it gives them a chance to file the next day. That's right. So uh, okay, um, do we uh, we we don't have any ZBAs, right? Don't think so. No new ones. I didn't no. see any in there. So uh, let's do uh, minutes of December seventh. So those, uh, Brian, if you would please. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Pierce, I move to approve the minutes dated December 7th, 2021. Second. The motion and a second. Um, any uh, omissions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Well, actually, Jeremiah? Aye. Aye. Christopher? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Dave? Aye. And myself is aye as well. So uh, let the record show five in favor, no opposed. Um, okay, so that kind of leaves us with uh, budget. Budget, yeah. And Shay Lane. Yeah, yeah. Actually, let's uh, let's talk about Shay Lane for a, um, a minute. Um, <sighs> that never. I was, I was gonna. I was gonna sort of just do that under an update because I didn't have it in time. Like I got it after we posted the agenda. So I just wanted, it's still in process, but do you want yeah, me to just explain because I Because when I read it through it, yeah. it sounds like we're not, the uh, peer review is not uh, satisfied yet with what we've no. presented and it looks like things don't match up. So, okay, well, I'll let you do uh, that under planning administrator update then. And if that uh, being the case, we'll do the talk about the budget for a minute if there's I, you know, I read through it. I mean, it's just as you're looking for some modest increases. Um, those, in, you know, but does is there a um, explanation? Any, any explanation necessary, or just basically? Uh, yeah, the only increase really would be um, so the housing services office. Um, we didn't pay any more last year. Actually, I think we paid a little less last year than the year before. Um, that is, should be expected to go up a little bit. It's you know it's people's yeah. salaries that kind of depend on that. So um, it's it's not a huge increase. It's I don't yeah. want to say it's, it's yeah. five hundred dollars. Um, and then the other thing. <laughs> So we had asked for $5,000 originally two years ago to review our subdivision and site plan review regulations to ensure compliance with the stormwater permit. And so it was put off for a year because of the budget. Then we, I brought it back last year. Unfortunately, I didn't refresh the quote and now the cost is estimated to be about twice that. So we wow. are going ahead with, um, you know, New England Civil doing the most important aspects of the review. But I expect that we will need additional money. So that's why that was something I don't know if there's money for that or not. If there isn't, we'll just go with what we have and do just, you know, a nice, clean, efficient review. But 
I wanted to meet with the town administrator to ask whether there is money for us to ask for that again. Um, if I hear that okay. there's no money anywhere, then I'll just take it off. Um, and then there's really nothing else that's that's really increasing everything else in terms of our supplies and other things yeah, like yeah. that are staying the same. I don't see One how thing, your supplies aren't going to increase because everything I'm trying to buy these days is going yeah. through the roof. You don't use a lot it's, of paper, oh, I guess. It's paper. It, it's, you know, it's not. Yeah, but paper comes paper. from trees and trees make wood and wood is about twice what it used to be, three yeah, times yeah. what it used to be. So we, hard, we oh. use less and less paper though every year, you know, the oh, more that's we good. have. <laughs> but Debbie buys it all at once. She's smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we have, but it is, it's, it is it's a crazy market out there. So, oh, it is. Uh, Talk about right. Woodburn. I got, I'm, I'm in the wood business. Yeah, I know, but Woodburn way, way up. And then it, came, it was like around 1600. Then it went down to like 400. Now it's back up. No, it started at 400. Went at 1600. Went down to 600. Now it's back up to around 1000. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and what it's no going to be. For it to go back up. Why did it go back up? I don't know. Well, you're I think it's business. use. Well, no, I don't know why it went back up. I have oh, talked to my I son. He's. It. I don't. I don't sell that stuff. I just fix Anderson door and windows. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I just know, in that I building. I, I, was, I, I was just kidding you because you said you're in next the next window, business, window so. please. <laughs> we can't get windows today. Let me tell you. I wish I knew. Yes, yeah. Danielle. I just wanted to mention one other thing that I almost put in the budget, but but I haven't yet. And I may submit a revision if you all think this is a good idea. Um, I also want to meet with the TA about it to ask his opinion too. Um, you know, at one point, you know, shortly after the sewer um, initial costs were approved at town meeting for the design, um, you know, TA and I had spoke spoken a little bit about um, what kind of staffing would be needed to, to really have, you know, in terms of economic development. And I think it would is clear that we could really benefit from someone for this coming year to reach out to businesses and really help lay the you know the foundation for for you know what could be our sewer project. Um, but the the reason I haven't requested a salary for someone like that is because I don't know what will happen after town meeting if the sewer project isn't approved. Um, I've always struggled to justify that position in the absence of us having sewer. So. And, and the other problem would be, I wouldn't know where we would put a person like that. So I was hoping to sit down with the TA be before putting something like that in our budget. I wanted to bring it up with you. Um, the budget is due on January 4th. I was gonna be submitting it that day. Um, I may or may not have had this discussion before that. I can always submit a revision, but I wanted to hear your thoughts in case. I think it's know, I, I, would, uh, I would hope that, or think that perhaps if we could find somebody that's already in town halls, so we could just perhaps add some money to their, what they're already doing. And uh, because that eliminates the need for additional, um, you know, benefits and so forth. Uh, you know, it makes it, makes it, the, the money becomes far more, for a lot less money, we get a lot more for our dollar that way, if we could do that. And I don't know if there's uh, somebody in there that, uh, in, in, the, in there would do that, take that as a, as a, as a separate situation. Um, well, what do you, what do you, Oh, Danielle, because I mean, you have like an untapped resource of brokers and people that have self-interest at hand of of selling these properties, moving, getting people lined up for sewer along mm -hmm. Main Street, and and that's I'm I'm jumping what I assume you mean, you know, by economic development along that sewer mm -hmm. avenue. But I mean, I don't know if you need to the, the taxpayers need to fund that when I think we have self-interest at at work here. Good old capitalism, <laughs> maybe, you know, that that might be the answer, but I don't know exactly mm -hmm. all the things you're looking to accomplish. So, well, I don't know that the taxpayer needs to fund that either. I, you know, I think that having an economic development person who is, you know, dedicated to, you know, the economic development committee and helping them carry out the things that they would like to do. Um, I mean, my hours are really limited by the fact that this is my primary job and I don't have a lot right. to give to the EDC. Um, Without a sewer in town, that's fine. I can manage that. But with sewer, I think, um, you know, in terms of outreach to the businesses, explaining to them what betterments and assessments might look like, working on the financial aspect of it, getting to know what, what the demand actually might be, getting a better understanding of what how each business is really operating and what their needs are and what potential for development could be. I mean, I do think that there is room for that, but I wouldn't want to hire someone only to not need them the following year. So it, I don't okay. know. 
Okay, that, that's kind of what I had in mind. So, so Danielle, is there a possibility of maybe getting a, a contract kind of person maybe. for a year and then, you know, possibly turning that person into a full time or, you know, whatever time person we need thereafter, if, when, when Sue goes through, mm -hmm. let's, well, yeah, let's be positive if about do this. That, though, if you're going to do that, you almost have to do an RFP and you almost have to do, you know, then you got to start looking at qualifications, um, <clears throat> you know, where this might not be, this might not need, um, uh, it, they would need some basic qualifications, but I, I think it would be, it's, it's something they would be directed in all the things they're going to do as opposed to um, having to be self, you know, uh, to be a self-starter. You're not going to, in other words, you're not probably not going to find somebody out in the marketplace that has the skills to do all of these things, just hanging around. Yeah, no, you're probably right. So, so, so if you do, uh, even, so if you're going to do a contract thing, now you, now you're into an RFP and now you're into the overhead money and it could get to be a pretty expensive situation. Yeah. Um, but it, it might be, it, but it might only be a half-time job so that, so that you, uh, if you did, even if you did it as a contract situation, it might not be terrible. But, but did you have any idea, Danielle, what kind of budget you were going to look for? I mean, I think for if it was, you know, an actual economic development director position, I mean, those are usually in the 80s and or higher. I mean, the towns who have serious economic development programs have a separate person who makes at least that much. So, um, I don't know if that's really viable for us or not. I was hoping to get some input from, from Mike on that too, as far as yeah. how he's been thinking about that. It's been a few weeks since we spoke about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think, considering I, I, could, I could see it go either way. Like I'm not yeah, convinced. Considering what we're gonna to spend do. on sewer, that's really not very much money. However, it's a drop in the bucket. Uh, huh? Yeah, I know. It's but, kind of a drop in the bucket. Yeah. The, the problem is, is the, Danielle doesn't have the time to work on CPC on economic development and she's going to get pulled into the sewer too. I know right. she is because she's so and good. That's fine. I can yeah, be but you the need sewer to, have... to a degree. <laughs> well, right, Joe's pretty good. She... Joe's got a pretty good handle on the sewer. I was pretty he impressed does. with that he discussion does. with him so far. He, he, he seems does. to be able to handle a lot of that stuff. As a matter of fact, I, I think he was I think he actually had a hand in selling the whole process of the whole project in a, in another towns that he's been in, from what he said. So, uh, so there's a there's a there's a I think there's a, there's a bit more knowledge in him than than I think of what we've had in the past with the people in his position. So I, I think he's a good fit for us right now. Oh, he is great. It's a great fit. So, for so what we um, need done. Yeah. So um, there's he's a resource that anybody we bring in will be able to use. Yep. That, that'll help that. But, you know, Danielle's yeah. still going to get sucked into helping out doing that other stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so that's it, fine and, to, to a degree. Right. And I don't, it's, I also don't know for sure that planning is where that person needs to be. Um, maybe, right. I, I don't know. I just kind of. Right. Wonder. It could be, it could be in some other. Why don't you yeah. talk to Mike about it and see what he says. <laughs> and before we, you know, because I, again, we don't want to put, you know, I understand what you mean about not wanting to get the cart before the horse here, so um, to get something going here. But I think that information yeah, is but, really needed. But yeah, but, but again, if the town doesn't vote for this sewer, then you've got somebody who's done all this work selling something that we don't have. Well, you know, that's so true. Are we gonna but if, <laughs> if, if the businesses get educated about it and what they can help them, they'll, they'll help push with yeah, the town. It's catch 22. <clears throat> it is. If you don't do it, it could hurt you. If you do do it, it could hurt you. <laughs> if you do do it, you might not get to use it. Is what the yeah, problem is. exactly. Um, all right. Well, why don't I think, uh, yes, Vincenzo. Uh, so just one comment on that too. When it comes to the business support, we should probably, and we don't have this answer yet, Hopefully we'll have it soon, but um, we should see where we end up with uh, the recommendation of who's going to bear what. Yeah. So, because I think that depending on how the split comes, you know, you know, on who bears the burden of the cost between betterment and the town and all that, you know, this consultant or whoever you would hire might have 
an impossible battle from the start, depending on how we're going to present the town meeting. Yeah. And again, I don't know what that number is going to be, but if it's, if it's decided that, you know, those that are going to be enriched pay the most, it's going to be hard to get that support, no matter, even if the Pope shows up. <laughs> um, Warren knows again, that's the best. Thing, um, maybe the first thing Mike, I mean, I'm assuming he's going to ask this. I don't know if Danielle, but how much? Well, he and I have spoken about this before and he, he brought it up. And I think in one of the requests um, in, when we were first looking at infrastructure money that might come our way, um, I, I think it was like 80s and 90s was roughly the, the salary that, I mean, it's not realistic, I think, to expect to have someone for less than that, unless it really is a part-time position, which could be, um, that's fine. Um, but I'm also wondering if this is something that is directed not by the CPC because it's, the sewer project isn't really ours. I'm kind of wondering if, it's something that gets, if, if this need is identified, maybe it's identified a little bit later in the budget process by the select board and, you know, administration, if that's the need, rather than us saying we think that you have that need. I don't, I don't know. And I, I only bring it up because of my role with the EDC and the CPC's relationship with the EDC. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think it through. No, um, no, and I, I, don't think, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that the, it's going to become something where I just, you wreck for a person, you, you know, you go through the 12 rounds that's going to be necessary with a select board to approve a position in that number. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, this person comes in and it's like, hold on, I got to convince these people to take this on in support. Yeah. Zero mm -hmm. chance. And now we just have a very well, expensive. That's why I said money. Joe, Joe to talk, talked a little bit about, about having done that, done some of that kind of work in the, in the other towns that he's been in. So so um, I'm not, we didn't, I didn't press him on it. We had quite a lot of a good conversation with him and uh, mm -hmm. he seems very knowledgeable and he seems like he's got the right background, but I didn't get in. We didn't, we didn't get into some of the detail. I would probably like to talk to him again uh, uh, and, and get some detail on. Is, on, is there a specific on, question you have? Because I have a call tomorrow morning with the wastewater, like we meet every two weeks. And that's where we kind of. Well, I, mean, I think my question would question. be, what did what in the towns that he worked in, did they have a person with this with this particular job, or did he do it? Did or, or did or, or did uh, did did one of the boards do it? Who? How did they handle that part of the job? The the marketing yeah. is basically yeah. what you're talking about. Places. So so obviously there's there's some um, um, level of knowledge there, and there's some level of. Uh, Ability, mm -hmm. so, uh, so or, or at least you could tell tell us what what worked. Yeah, because it was a, right now the uh, the marketing strategy from the preliminary is going to be me and Steve O'Leary, you know, going hat in hand, door to door, yeah. saying, "Hey, we really need this." So that's what we got so far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need a little help there, Vincenzo. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's. Uh, I'm just saying it's early, but that's. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So far, it's been a discussion of give us the ammunition where we can show people very clear cut yeah. on how much this could transform North Reading. I mean, I yeah, think well, I, I, I think that's really a key point. And, and I and I think that's part of what we're trying to get out of this this uh, RFP that he sent that Joe sent out. So, OK, yeah, I mean, yeah. Which... And if you read that, if you read that RFP, it was pretty comprehensive. He had, he did well. So he obviously knows his, he knows the business. He obviously knows the, the routine because that RFP, I think, was well done. He knows it too well because I had about a 20 questions. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's, yeah, it's complicated stuff. I keep telling yeah. everybody on the calls. I mean, I'm like, okay, so tell me exactly what I need to repeat to the people that are going to vote for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Because the truth is, right, it's kind of like, I'm trying to focus on how it can make your life better. Yeah. Right. Quality of life. Yeah. And maybe add a little bit to your property value because, you know, th there's a lot of technical things that are awesome, but you know, I mean, yeah. uh, when I'm on the baseball field talking about the ledge, first people yeah. are like, all right, yeah, Vincenzo, the ledge, I get it. So why do we need a restaurant? I'm, I can go to Andover and it's like, well, and then I go on my little <laughs> spiel. So <laughs> Not that I don't yeah. mind sending people Danielle's way in Melrose where they have 150 restaurants, but you know, <laughs> which I go to a lot. Some by the good way. ones too. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I will uh, do what I can tomorrow morning 
That Danielle, are you on that call tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be on that too. So all right. we can we can ask. Um, all right, I'll follow up on that. I, I'll plan to submit the budget as it is now. I know that yep. revisions happen and if it's need of, is identified later, we can always add it. Yeah. Um, well, we've had revisions happen at the board, of, that's a select board meeting before, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. In our favor. <laughs> yeah. Right. You want to give us more money? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, well, we don't ever say no to more. <laughs> Yeah, well, they had a good reason for it. They wants to do the work, so. That's right. Um, all right. Um, okay, well, Vincenzo, thanks very much. We'll uh, we'll work our way forward yeah. on this and see where we go. Okay, so Danielle, I'm going to turn it back over to you for your plenty of minute up update, which you were able to uh, stick a little Shay Lane in there as well. Sure. I'm going to say Merry Christmas now. My apologies. Okay. But I want to say, <laughs> on say that. I hope everybody has a uh, good Christmas, New Year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, can it, it can only get better next year, right? I mean, I know yeah. I said this at the end of last year, but. Yeah. Maybe a new variant, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to say, I do want to say thank you, Vincenzo, for the past year, especially for your involvement with us. It's, this has been, this last year or so has been uh, um, so much more interactive with, with all the boards, partly because of you and, 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 their, and Phil and everybody being able to, connect us with it. I feel so much more connected to the whole system than in the past. I felt we spent a lot of time operating in a vacuum. Yep. I don't feel that way anymore. No, so, no, uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, so no, that's great. And then hopefully, I mean, we oh, let's just say that we have a monumental task next year for lack of a better word. Well, you know, we all work <laughs> together in the same direction. We'll get it done. Oh, I hope so. So, um, well, thank you everybody. Have a great Take holiday. Care. Uh, okay, talk to you next year. Except Danielle, I talk to you tomorrow morning at eight fifteen. Tomorrow, yeah. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, Danielle, you're up. Sure. So uh, nine Shailene. Uh, let's see. We when we last met, uh, I think Warren and I had updated everyone on the fact that we had met with um, yeah. Roy, who's now the engineer of record for the project, um, which is great. In the meantime, there had been another engineer that Mr. Murray had hired. Um, to look at the drainage, particularly on Nine Shea, and to run calculations just for that lot. And we had that reviewed by DCI, and DCI um, found that they, they weren't satisfied with the way that information was presented and how the calculations were done. So I shared that um, with Mr. Murray. I don't have a response back yet. I don't really know what the outcome needs to be. I think I may need to go back to DCI and ask what needs to be done because I, and I've also offered to get in touch with this engineer directly myself to try to talk through the issues. Um, I'm not really sure how that works now that there's, you know, Luke is on board as being the engineer of record. Um, I, I don't know if I may, might need to get together a meeting of, of all the engineers to figure this out, but I'll try to do some follow-up. Um, but I guess the bottom line is DCI wasn't um, satisfied with the way that that uh, site was evaluated in terms of the way it's performing. Warren, I don't know if you had anything more to share having seen the report. Well, I mean, I, I, I just technical data because I read through it and I understand it. So, um, and, and I, I understand what his problem is. Um, but there also, there's also a line that he put in there where he says, that he understands that there are some additional things that have been done, but he doesn't know what they were and they don't show on the plan. So he doesn't know how they affect the final outcome, I mean, of the thing. So, so I mean, there's, there's, there's still a couple of questions and, and, I, and, and uh, um, the infiltration units that they put in don't really uh, capture, they're, they're not designed to capture all the different storm events, yet they're ignored in the final calculations. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that, you know, that he talks about uh, that um, that mean that the, that the like that the calculations, e even though the, the report claims to reduce the amount, the quantity of runoff, not not just the rate, but the quantity of runoff, which is which is uh, which would be really good if it was true, uh, but there are discrepancies in the square area that's being captured and so forth. So there's like 900 feet of an area that that should be captured on this that, that not in the calculations. So I mean just those just some general points on that. 
that um, that um, the reason that Dave's unhappy with it. In other words, he's not picking, he's not being picky about it. He's really ha has some real real concerns, and I and, yeah, and, and I understand yeah. them, and I and I agree because there's also they when they did that uh, when the other engineer did his calculations, his hydrology calculations, he also didn't know about. He didn't take into account some of the breakout of the hill up the, up there, and um, and whether or not that uh, that's going to be captured and go into the cat uh, into the uh, into the uh, detention pond because it's not really it's coming from a different catchment area. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, on and on and on. So um, and he has some legitimate complaints uh, and some le legitimate concerns. About it, uh, uh, validity of that that and it may need to be re, re to recalculated uh to, to just to make sure and because if we don't and we get a, a, a heavy duty rain event and it starts pouring into these yards again we're not going to hear the end of it no oh, that was really nice, so in a, in a nutshell that's where we're at so um Go ahead, Danielle, you can have the floor back there. That's um... No, I'll just, I, I need to follow up both with, you know, Mr. Murray and uh, with DCI to figure out how we go ahead in terms of correcting and addressing the way this has been presented. Well, he so. did say, um, he did, he does say in there that, that some of this stuff needs to be, there may, needs to be a new as built is, is kind of what he was getting at. And that as built needs to be evaluated to see if it's proper. That's kind of the bottom line. Here. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I hope we get a good heavy rainstorm at some point before too long. Not that I want to flood these people up, but I want to see if everything they did works. If this doesn't work, let's, let's, I want to know right now. <laughs> and then let's go back to fixing it. So. Okay, well, I'll follow up with both and we'll keep working on this. Um, if we need another meeting, we'll yep. make sure we bring them in. Um, okay, I guess next on my list, um, advocates, <laughs> David Eisen and I spoke today. Um, I, they were gonna be preparing a presentation deck for us that I can share. I think we had talked the last time about me just sending it out to the property owners just as a kind of last, here's what we're thinking, um, if you're, you know, have any interest. Um, and then after that, you know, we do need to come to the select board to present it at some point. I don't know when that will be. I can request that we be on their agenda to present what we've done. Um, I did speak with David a bit about um, the difficulty I think we've had with the fact that it's been hard to plan a community meeting because we don't really have the response from the owners. And, um, you know, David feels pretty optimistic that, you know, we could still have a community meeting and that step one with that might be to present this to the select board. And he said, well, they're, you know, elected representatives of, of the community. And depending on what kind of feedback we get from them, that could be step one. And then the next step could be, um, you know, a community meeting. And, um, you know, if the property owners, the property owners themselves might not care if there's interest, but but developers would care if there was an interest. And then the property owners themselves might have an incentive to want to try to move ahead with something. So that was his thinking. I wanted to just update you and just let you know I was awaiting this, you know, final presentation that I'll be sending out to the owners, um, unless you tell me not to, I was going to be doing that. Um, and then try to get on the select board's agenda to try to try, try to wrap this up and figure out what's next. I don't know if anyone had any thoughts. Yeah, this is a tough one. Anybody got any thoughts on this? Or I mean, I mean, I think you're on the right path, but 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 I but, but I think it's a rocky path, um, and, and it's got hills on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what nice. I mean. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that um but but, uh, but I think there's nowhere else for us to go right now. I mean, this is the only path that that exists for us because we haven't made much headway with it with the other things that we've done. So let's get it all together. Let's present it to um and it only it's a little more believable 
you know, with the vote for to do the research on the sewer, or, or when it begins to look like sewer is coming, the whole that whole project begins to look a little more real. Um, not a lot more real, but a little more real. Um, and I, I, I just, I think that if we, uh, you know, if he presents it in, or we present it in a, <clears throat> in a positive manner and say, this is, here's a, and again, we have to present this as a concept, you know, because we can't, we can't, we can't present it as a plan. It has to be, a, it's a concept and we have to make sure we keep saying that and that this is just what could happen because, right, because we've had people that said, oh, we heard, you know, that you uh but you know, wait, there's no place on Main Street to put all those houses. You know, I mean, there's been a couple of comments say that. Oh yes, there is, <laughs> and here it is in in this concept um, that we have that that'll do everything that we said uh, that that the it, it would it would do everything that these um, that the MAPC study and that the housing development all those things all these plans will all come together here and and, and not can all be accomplished in this one project. So it's kind of a we need to present it perhaps in that light and then, and then just uh, then let it lay and and having then send it out to all of the uh, uh, butters and everything and see if somebody signs up. I don't know. That's the best we could do. I mean, it's, you. I mean, to 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 let to let make make sure people know this is a concept because right now we've lost um, pieces of the pie already. We lost the one piece for sixty six Winter Street. That guy, but except that guy may get and may be interested in getting involved still, you know, because he's got to do something. That building he's buying is kind of rickety, so he's either yeah. got to tear that down and put something brand new up, or he's going to hit, listen to what we got to say and say, well, you know, this could be good for me too. Maybe I could get involved and get something here now that I got this piece of property. So. Um, We'll see, uh, I, but I think yeah, we have to go the way you you're suggesting, Danielle. And that is, put it together, do a basic presentation of the concept to the select board, send it out to the abutters, and as they say, run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. I agree. Yeah. So, does that help you any? It does. Thank you. Yes, I'll. I will. Plan to plan to do that. I'll send it out as soon as I get the final from David, and then right. we'll see if we get a response. And either way, whether we do or we don't, I think um, yeah. we're due a conversation with the select board to say this is what we did. Um, we got the funds, and this is how we we'll spent stand them. behind our we'll stand behind our work. That's all. That's all we can do. Does yeah. anybody else have yeah. any comments on that? Anything else you want to throw in there? Uh, yeah, Danielle, I do agree with Warren. Uh, it can't say you know plan. It's got to say concept. Yeah, I agree. You know, and, and maybe you got to reiterate that to David to say, hey, look, go through, make sure everything says concept, no mm -hmm. plan. We did do that with it before. And right. He did say this is a concept. He did, you know. Right. It's just going to be a concept that addresses a lot of the concerns that people right. have about the growth of Route 28. That's what you said. Right. Right. And That's this exactly concept what it addresses is. a lot of those concerns and a lot of that growth and a lot of those things that make North Reading right. a better place. And that's how you present it to them. In those words. Yep. yep. So let's see. Okay. Great. Um, now, is David going to do the presentation? He has offered to make the presentation to the select board. Um, okay. He's pretty I would good like at that. It. He's very good and he really knows his stuff. And I would like him to be able to do that, you know, within the next few months and not have him okay. hanging forever. Yeah. I'm sure he wants yeah. to wrap up this project too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to get him a cot or something. He'll be living in town hall. That's <laughs> you know, true. You're eating up a lot of his time. Yeah. He's been very good. He has been very good. Yeah. Very. But he does have a couple of projects going on in town. So it's not like we're his only game here either. That's true. That's true. Um, I just wanted to make you aware. I, I don't have a lot of information to share on it yet, but I will soon. Um, the housing choice requirements that passed um, this year for MBTA communities, um, this is something that we are going to be addressing over the next few months um, because we are an MBTA abutting community. Um, there are certain housing related requirements we will need to meet. And um, this is part of the housing choice legislation that passed a year ago. Um, 
the final regulations have not been published yet. They're in draft form. And I can share them with you if we want to have a discussion about them at, at you know, I can maybe do the next meeting. Um, I am working through them with town council because it is possible we already meet them. Um, it's a requirement that even if we don't have any land area within a half mile of transit, that's the first thing their communities are supposed to do um, if they can't meet that. Even so, all the communities have to have an area of a zoning district of 50 acres that allows multifamily development by right at a density of at least 20 units per acre. Now, Edgewood meets that, or I'm sorry, 15 units per acre. Edgewood meets that. Yep, that's, that's not quite big enough. I don't know if we will also, if we can get credit for Martin's Landing, that should take care of us, but it can't be age restricted. So the zoning doesn't restrict Martin's Landing, but the housing development itself is age restricted. So I don't know if we will be getting credit for that or not. Um, so this is an issue I'm exploring. I wanna make sure we're meeting all requirements. If we do not meet these requirements, we lose our ability to receive a lot of the big state grants, including MassWorks, which I know the town has been thinking of very seriously to fund the sewer project. So by May 2nd, we need to meet certain requirements, not zoning requirements, but we at least need to fill out, there's a particular form with basic information um, that uh, like a survey form that the towns have to submit. And by that time they have to submit, um, they have to have held, their select board has to have held a public hearing where they discuss the new guidelines. And that's something I'm gonna be working with. Um, presumably, you know, we will be involved. I'm working with the TA on it too. Um, we have, the select board is gonna have to have that hearing in order for us to be in compliance for that first year. So there's more to come on this. I'm continuing to sift through the regulations and the information, and I'm gonna be working with town council on figuring out whether or not we think we already comply. If we don't comply, we're gonna be needing to come up with a zoning solution somewhere in town. So just wanted to put this on your radar. I can pull together more information about it. We can start talking about it once I have a little bit more. Okay. So I want to let you know about that. Um, and TEC, which is the firm that was doing the uh, Main Street uh, traffic study and concept plan, um, they expect to have some results from the survey they did um, after the holidays. They were gonna call me with some basic, you know, kind of baseline information on what the survey found. They'll be following up with the draft um, report and concept plans uh, shortly after that. So I just wanted to let you know that that's still in progress and I hope to hear from them. Uh, sometime in January. So, and that's all I have for right now. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up or uh, <clears throat> we're good to go? Then I will, um, then I guess I will officially adjourn this meeting at 9.08. Thank you all very much for coming. I think we made some headway on a few things tonight. <laughs> yeah, we did. Let's see how it all works out.